Hello and welcome to a pair of Dice Lost podcasting channel. My name is Brendan, my pronouns are he, him, and I'll be your storyteller for this game about living gods on the wrong side of the law. Joining me for this game is... Hey there guys, my name is Tyler, my pronouns are he, him, I'm going to be playing uh, Ricky, the fire aspected street exorcist. Hi everybody, my name's Christina, I will be playing Elion. My pronouns are she, her, and Elion's pronouns are they, them. They are a water aspected investigator. Hi everyone, my name's Cody, pronouns are he, they, and I play Amalar Divine, the air aspected shady businessman. Hi, my name is Britt, and my pronouns are she and her. I play a wood aspect named Rush Ferris, who has a ferret familiar named Zeke. Together, they specialize in archery, larceny, and dance. Hi, I'm Michaela Sheher, and I'll be playing Tirali of House Regara, an Earth-aspected leader of a small military force known as the Tyrants, who cooks the books for the gang. And this is Exalted, Like a Dragon-Blooded. Act 3, Love and Loss in Lookshy. Uh, we are going to resume uh, like a dragon blooded uh, after a small little uh, inter uh, intermission between acts. Uh, act two has concluded, and we are now on to Act three, which is uh, I don't really have a working title for it besides uh, the Scavenger Lands question. Mark? Um, currently, you guys are on a small fleet of boats uh, all out uh, that has. That's going through the Inland Sea and up towards Lookshy. Uh, basically, you guys have gotten outside of Cheers Heroes uh, waters and are kind of on that sea uh, between the Blessed Isle and the rest of creation uh, up to the massive rivers that uh, kind of go all throughout the scavenger lands. Uh, you guys have, after a very eventful day of getting onto the boat and saving people's lives and the re and the revelation that uh Resh Balar is still alive in fact you all have decided to uh turn in uh some sooner than others um was there anything that you guys wanted to do before having the big meet up and like ask and answer questions with like the boss Basically, uh, did you guys want to check in on any NPCs? Uh, did you guys want to just have like a scene of screaming at the ocean? Uh, the choice is up to you. You guys have another six days on this boat. Oh boy, that's just going to be so awful. Man, I don't know what to do other than sulk right now. Yeah, I was about to say, Ricky's having some big sad boy moments. I mean, Devon can just plan his wedding. Uh, he's got plans. Gonna hang out with her I brother, mean, probably. Has anyone seen the movie uh, Into the Woods? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just imagine it's the scene of me, like Ricky and Devine, just having the that like really like tragically sad, ironically annoying agony song, but this... just the entire boat ride. Yeah, that one. <laughs> just bros being sad. Just two bros being sad. This is. Well, that whatever that Ricky does to clear his mind, I believe that last time you said that you were going to just go sleep or something because you you have had a a rough day, my guy. There is a lot less alcohol on our boat at the end of the trip than there is in the beginning of our trip. Good to know. I'm pretty uh, sure that's accurate for most of us. But, like, extra a lot less. Divine, I have a question for you. Yeah. What do you want to do to calm your nerves after almost getting hit with a War Strider sized uh, arrow? Man. If you don't got anything, I got something for you. Like, I think at least part of his process involves Aaliyah, but it's hard getting into the mindset of my world's just been shattered. Uh, 
But yeah, he's he still doesn't know what he's gonna do uh about that, so he's probably actually avoiding Aaliyah right now because you know, we're on our way to his wedding. Just getting drunk with his boy Ricky, right? <laughs> yeah. Our, our our sad drunk arc is gonna be the fucking shittiest and the best ever. You guys begin your sad drunk arc. At some point, the both of you probably find yourself below deck with some of the other sailors. There, there is a couple sailors gathered around a table as the boat rocks back and forth. As that some of the uh, the storms that were kept at bay in Cheerskira's port do tend to come through, especially this time of year. And there on like a small mat on this rocking ship, there is a uh, there's a guy uh, in kind of long flowing clothes who uh, has uh, like short hair and like a headband like wrapped around his head. And he's got kind of like this half lidded look to him that kind of says that he's probably also been in his cups. And he looks to you guys from across like some of the other guy, uh, some of the other guys who are sitting down around him and he goes, hey. Y'all want to gamble on this trip? And he kind of like picks up some dice and, like, waves them at you. Like, kind of, like, picking them up, like, putting them between, like, e- uh, between each of his fingers, and he kind of has, uh, like, three dice in each hand, and he's kind of, like, looking at you all, like, hey, look at this. Do you, I can't say no to a good gamble. Ugh. Yeah, I prefer I prefer to use my own dice though. And uh uh Divine's gonna pull out his uh their bronze, right? Yep. Yeah, his uh bronze no decahedrons. Oh man, big spender over here. And he like sets uh how many you have like three of those now, right? I do have three. He he sets his six sided dice down and he pulls out of like a little pack. He pulls out uh, he pulls out two bronze dodecahedrons and he kind of smiles and looks at him and goes. Looks like somebody's got me beat. You want to play, bud? I mean, you can't turn down a man of culture. Fantastic. So are we playing with these dice or are we playing with my dice? And he like points at the six sided dice. No offense, but your dice look a little boring. We're trying to take our minds off things, right? Right, Ricky? We we better minds. Yep. You're gonna bet your mind. Okay, if you want to bet your mind, I, I, I'm sure that these can do it. He's going to hold the Seagrass dodecahedrons up between uh, between two, between three of his fingers. He's, he holds up both of his. So you're going to bet my. Uh, you're gonna, we're going to bet our minds, huh? So what does that mean if we lose? Are you like one of those soul stealing type or what's the deal, man? If you lose, I want to know the thing that you think is your biggest secret. The part of you that you hide from everybody else. Oh, that's spicy. Okay, man. And if I win... I get to see those dice. I don't want them. I just want to make sure that they're the authentic deal. That's fair enough. Then after that, we can we can bet some other stuff if they are. Okay. Gambling. First, you just roll the dice. 
Uh, if they come out as a result both parties agree to, then no adjustments need to be made. However, if one party wishes to change the result, either up or down, they need to make some kind of social action versus the target social defense, applying appropriate intimacies as per usual. The amount of successes versus defense will allow that player that amount of adjustment up or down on the dice. Okay. Um, so how many, I guess the better question is how many dice are you, there? There basically there are five dice potentially in play. What do we do now? Like, do we just have, do, do both of us just roll off two or do we just roll off one? We should probably just roll off one. That, that would probably be easier. Wouldn't it? I roll three and you roll two or else what's the point in collecting? No, <laughs> no, no. I mean, that's fair. If you want to do that, that's also fair. You do have the statistical advantage over this guy. Why wouldn't you use it? Because it's not a gamble if you know you're going to win. Uh, I'd say since we both have two, we just do two D10. Okay. Dodecahedrons are tens, right? Or yep. are they twelves? I think Doda uh, is twelve. If it was just a decahedron. Oh, I, th- I, th- I think they called them decahedrons, didn't they? they? They are decahedrons. I don't know why I keep putting the dough in front. Because it's more fun to say. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, does... And he kind of like motions over to uh, Ricky, who's probably drinking. He's like, does this one want in on this gambling? No, nah, you, uh, you fellas go ahead. I, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm done losing for now, so I'm good. You know what, man? That, that's totally fair. I think you deserve, uh, I think you deserve like a winner's hand every now and again. And he, like, he takes the cup that he was, uh, shaking the dice in, uh, his, his six sided dice in. And he kind of like twirls it a little bit and it disappears into his long sleeves. And then out the other end, um, he produces a small cup of rice wine and hands it to you. Okay. I'm probably a little drunk, but not probably not drunk enough to just let that happen. I may not tilt my head at it. So does it look like he just did a trick or is he doing some magic bullshit? Make me a perception and alertness. Or awareness. I think I think awareness is what it is in this game. It is awareness. You did your best. Two. <laughs> oh no. Um I only wrote not- four. That's half. <laughs> I forgot how bad you are at that. I'm so bad at awareness and perception, dude. Oh my god, it's so good. I'm only good at realizing mystical bullshit, not normal everyday bullshit. You don't know how he did it. Maybe he, maybe he secretly like a furnace rhino, but instead of for instead of eating rocks to produce ore, instead he's like a a brewery person and he can just brew stuff very quickly. It, as far as you know, there was some sleight of hand that happened and he gave you some rice wine. Well, I'm pretty drunk, so I guess I'm just going to drink the, the rice wine milk. Um, I mean, it, it tastes like sake, you know, rice wine, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's good. That's all I needed to be. All right, Cody. Here comes the roll. Book. Wow. Wow, yeah. you got a 19 ver- 19 total versus my 13. Now, obviously, you like that result. Yeah, but you don't. But I don't. That is six above what that I would like to use. So this guy was going to try and use his social influence on you uh, by basically like reveal, like not like he rolls the dice. You guys roll the dice and it's ready to go. And you both kind of know what that each other's is. And he is 
not confident in his. So he's going to try and basically like look to you and just kind of like, uh, I see that you're not going to be able to beat me with that. You didn't even use your third dice. Uh, unfortunate. And he's going to try and like basically try to like bluff your resolve to try and uh, lower the result. Oh, you're trying to get to me. Yeah, I, I see what's going on. Does does my specialty of bitch don't kill my vibe kick in here? Yes. Uh, wait, specialty or result or intimacy? My integrity specialty. Oh, then yes, yes, it would. Uh, what what total would that make your integrity? I don't think well bred has anything to do with it. Mm, not in this case. All right, so then it's a six. Okay, so what would that make your resolve then? Uh, a, a six? Oh, no, I'm saying, uh, yeah, it makes my resolve a six. Okay. And are you going to, before that, uh, so I'm going to let you know that for his social influence role, he is going to be spending some stuff, uh, and he is going to have a total pool of 13. Well, Do you is... want to spend anything else to up it? No, that's close enough. I want to see how that plays out. And last question. Do you have any intimacies that would boost your resolve in this? If it's not fun, it's wor- not worth doing. No. Um, decisive as those wins, and I must gamble. Oh. I don't know if having a one point intimacy for having to gamble. Uh, um, I don't think that miners lower your resolve, but I could be wrong. Oh, um, so minor intimacies actually give a plus two resolve or a minus one resolve penalty when that you uh, align with them. Uh, I would say that this absolutely aligns with it. Making your resolve actually a five. Hmm. I don't like you having that much of an advantage, so I would pump, uh, want to pump four motes to raise it by two, putting it at a seven, since you want to try to play me. Okay. When you do that, he glances at you and goes, oh, not as confident as, as I thought you were. Okay. Even using it out of my personal? Yeah, even using it out of your personal. Mm. Uh, with Maybe I will make that lore roll. With ten successes, which only gave him three over, uh, which means that he could only up himself to a 16. Um, so he came close, but he did not win. He reveals the the cup and uh, or he he takes the cup off of his dice and reveals a 16 is excited and then looks at your dice and then there's immediately a frown and he's just like oh man it's not my lucky day okay what was it you wanted to know uh the secret you least wish everyone else to know do i have to say it in public or can we go somewhere private the uh, divine's gonna look around. Uh, if you if you've got somewhere more private, I I understand what I'm asking. He looks around and uh, to all the gamblers there, just goes, "Okay, boys, clear out. I gotta. We're gonna have a little chat. Uh, your your friend can stay. He looks like he's enjoying himself. But uh, yeah, you you guys clear out. We uh." I gotta have a little chat with with uh, with my buddy. You, you know, take five. Go go swap the deck or whatever you all do. You fucking boat people. And you can see that uh, you can kind of see like uh, near him, he has amassed like a large quantity of like essentially like poker chips near him. He's like, I've taken them for everything they're worth. Ugh, they were just trying to win it back anyway. And as soon as it like. People leave and the uh, the sound of footsteps is gone. This guy just kind of like leans on his like 
lay kind of lays down and leans his elbow on the ground and leans his head on his uh his fist and he looks at you and goes secret that nobody wants to hear about me yeah okay this what i do this ain't my real job real jobs well my original job man that that wine's getting to me my original job was uh Looking after coastal caves, you know, tending to them and that kind of thing. What do you, what do you, what tending needs to be done to coastal caves? Oh, I mean, isn't it obvious, man? That's where, that's where, that's where pirates go to smuggle things. You got to tend to them. You got to make the. Got to make the ports look nice and inviting for their ships to come in. Just enough rocks to keep the keep the unskilled uh, realm people away. But, you know, the, the actual pirates, mm. they'll come in. They'll risk it. So you're a realtor for nautical hideouts? Yeah, something like that. It's fucking cool. Right? Anyway, hey, do you mind if I just see those just to make sure they're real? Oh, yeah, because the they didn't change, so there's no way of... Yeah. Here, uh... I'm just gonna flick one over to him, like, between my thumb and my forefinger, and just flick it in the air for him to catch. He catches it deftly uh, in his hand and kind of like test the weight on it and like it kind of like goes between uh his fingers as it he kind of moves it very uh deftly and you know Sigareth made these things and they're really interesting but he only lets you play games I think we should change the rules what do you think about that divine I mean what do you mean? Oh, I might be too drunk for this. Yeah. Rule changes. Yeah, we'll play a different game. Cool. And he, uh, with your permission, he reaches over and grabs the other two dice if he can, and he's going to kind of keep them together with his other two and kind of, uh, you literal, you and if Ricky is still awake and everything you literally do see him do magic like sorcery he just starts paneling essence okay this this is the kind of party we having okay yeah this is the kind of party that we're having and it takes a little bit and while that he's doing this he kind of looks up to the divine and goes do you have any interest in this kind of stuff, bud? Yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be just like my buddy Ricky when I grow up. Oh, Brendan, can well. I tell what the fuck he's trying to cast? Yeah, if you want to make me a uh, perception and a cult role. Now we're talking. Or. Four. So with four successes, you are not sure of the exact spell that he is casting. It is not something that you have learned how to do. However, it seems that the spell is taking longer than you would normally use to cast uh, to cast something like this. Uh, no, normally, the, the sorcery that you know, Ricky, is is rather fast and precise. It takes maybe a couple seconds to cast, whereas this is taking whole minutes to cast. But in observing it, it looks like that whatever that he's doing is trying to pull out bits of the 
green Malthian energy that has uh, kind of put itself like wholly into these dice. You can see little flecks of green and off purple and uh, shards of like flesh burnt pink like coming out of uh, coming out of the dice as that he does this and kind of like is like almost like he's pulling on strings. Does it seem like he's trying to take the power from inside them? No, it seems like that he's trying to take the demonic nature from them. Okay, just going to keep watching carefully. And as that he's doing this, um, he's talking, and uh, Divine, you can kind of see that he is aging before your eyes. Okay. Yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna learn how to do this, I can, I, I can show you some tricks. Maybe not exactly like your friend Ricky, but certainly something a little bit more your own style. You wanna forge your own legend, not just be, live in someone else's shadow. You know? Yeah, Ricky's not as good as talking at me, so I'll need to learn more talking tricks. And you, you sir, are a talker. You teach me some things and I'll show you some. Well, that's how that I got my job. And he's kind of pulling more and more of the, uh, of the demonic essence out. And eventually he finishes. And before the both of you, you can see the old, but fairly well-worn and jovial, uh, form of laughing ragamuffin, the God of smuggling the shogun of uh, the, uh, the, the the Bureau of Criminal Activity. That makes more sense. Oh! That explains it. So, uh, good to see you under better circumstances. Right? Yeah. Uh, well, but, hey, just let you know, bud, wasn't lying about that. I, uh... I was actually once, uh, centuries and centuries ago, I was actually just a lowly god of uh, sea caves. Didn't even have smuggling as a as a job. It wasn't really a thing that anyone did. Hadn't been invented yet. So you made a job. Oh, no, 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 no. The, the humans made the job. I just saw that it was a uh, an open job, so I added it. Capitalized on the market. Exactly. So, uh, with that said, here you dice back. Um, if you find any more of Seagrass dice, you just put them in a bag with with the rest of them. The 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 latent uh, sorceress working that I've put on these should get the uh, get the demonic energy out. He's probably not going to be very happy about that. But fuck them; these were originally Plentamon's dice. That's okay. I'll, you know, beat them in another bet because people always think they can bet against my buddies. And you were smart enough not to do that. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm always going to bet bet on you guys. And I'm that's why you. we make you win. Exactly. Oh, right. Uh, speaking of which, uh, he just kind of like does a little, he like gets up and kind of like shakes out some of his, uh, his dice cheating tools, like some magnets and some other stuff that he has like on his, like up his sleeves. And then he just kind of like pokes you in the forehead with a finger. He's just like, cool. You got the magic inside you, bud. Hey, uh, you know, I, I maybe should have checked this while we're there, but you know, I got a little, uh, distracted with every, with everything. Um, any, any idea what happened to the, uh, the broken maiden? She's still in Cherescuro. She'll leave. Oh. Old old maid, yeah. Uh no, she she's actually been back up in uh She's actually been back up in uh back up in Yushan making a making a big stink about uh about everything. You know, you know how she is. Yeah. Yeah, you know, being the uh, being the god of emancipated peoples is kind of comes with the territory, you know. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, sometimes we some sometimes we butt heads, but you know, smuggling is what smuggling is. He's just kind of like he he gives you like this. I don't want to say like a grin, like he's happy about it, but he's like, eh, it comes with the territory, and he's kind of giving an implication of having done some stuff. Yeah, because if you're the god of smuggling, you're also the god of smuggling people. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just, uh, looking out, you know? He kind of, like, kind of, like, draws a line in the sand with that statement a little bit, and drops it. He he nods to you and goes, oh, by the way, um, she's she's probably going to be down in, uh, Shit, what is that place with all the gods? Um, not heaven, not you, Shan. Um, it's a city. It's in the middle of like three rivers. I'm really, it's not a big pirate place, so I'm kind of bad about it. Um, there's a lot of religion going on there. Um, if you're waiting for Tyler to know, Tyler will not know. You're right. You're right. Tower would not know. Uh, Divine, on the other hand, would know because he's literally describing Great Forks, which is the city that Divine came from originally and where Ferris is from. That would be what I was assuming you were, talk- you were talking about, but I didn't know. Okay. Yeah. The Forks of the Gods. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great Forks. Yeah. Oh, right. That is where you all are from. I mean, not you all, but like the. He kind of like motions as best he could to like encompass the both of you to imply the crime family. Right. Yeah. So she's going there to make a petition about uh, shit something. Maybe she wanted to attack Nexus. I don't remember. She was making a big stink about it, though. So like if you get a chance... I think that she's going to be there at some point. So if you want to talk to her, that's the time to do it. Or, you know, just he just kind of like motions in a vague prayer motion. I don't know. Sometimes that works. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, that make that makes sense. Yeah, you pray to God to talk to a God. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Uh Cody, uh I believe that we've already discussed this uh off uh off mic. However, um feel free to use these stats for a uh let me actually look it up real quick. Uh in the main book. But your dice have been upgraded into artifact thrown weapons. Uh, hey. so, feel free, so feel free to use these stats on a uh I guess a light artifact thrown weapon would make the most sense. They are a bunch of dice. What was the boomerang considered? Was it medium? It was medium. Yeah, fuck it. You got five of them. It's a, it's a medium artifact thrown weapon now. But yes, you can now throw your dice at people and also use them with that with those elsewhere charms instead of having to put like a talent of jade in there or whatever anymore. Hey. Uh, w- with spending some time with ra- with laughing ragamuffin out of the way and getting your sorceress initiation done. Um, is there anything else that anyone else wants to do besides be seasick, spend nebulous time with your brother, or? Like it, you, you did it, say Falar was on the ship, right? Yes, Falar is on the ship. After I get over being a sad boy, I'll probably go talk to her to see, you know, what the fuck is going on with her. Okay. Can. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, that sounds like actually a good scene to do uh, in just a moment. Um, like, like I said, I'm sure she'd probably just be trying to stay as... Not motion sick as possible. You just chew on some seaweed. Yep. Gotta get some seaweed. Okay. Um, so in that case, then, um, 
After the day passes and you all get the moment to wake back up and nurse your hangovers, nurse your motion sickness, the sun is higher in the sky. Um, you all have made it about a day and a half's journey outside of Chiroscuro, and you are coming along just fine with little interference along the trade routes. The only thing of interest note, I would say, is there is a port that you all are passing by that looks like it perpetually has clouds above it that's uh, closer to the uh, closer to the Blessed Isle. Uh, it looks almost like the place is in a state of perpetual night. And as that you guys are kind of waking up, going around nursing hangovers, uh, kind of getting everything all done, um, eventually uh, various members of the crime family like approach you all and uh, kind of go uh, basically call everyone down to the small office that Bilar has set up. Which is to say, just a room that he's picked in uh, on the bottom of the ship through a couple curtains. Getting everyone there, it takes a little bit to get you all and the rest of the NPCs that you all have with you there and kind of settle down and set up. But eventually, him sitting at the head of the table with that uh, kind of bird-ish looking lady uh, who you, uh, some of you knew as Vinif Seek uh, just a few days ago. Uh, with her standing by his side, um, he looks to you all and just goes, Well, things have certainly gotten out of hand. I thought, I apologize, I thought that this plan would be just useful in catching the traitor in our midst, but, oof, oh boy. I, uh, I wanted to apologize. I didn't think that, um, faking my own death would have such a cataclysmic, uh, effect yeah didn't uh didn't see that one coming when you know i don't even know man i'm just tired you do realize that ferris was being framed for your murder correct um no, I had no idea that she was being framed for my murder. He kind of looks to Ferris, like, legitimately shocked. Uh, Elion looks to Anna, he said it was? Yes. You didn't tell him that who you were posing as? You were helping me basically figure out the murder and that we found arrows that were his sister's old arrows in the... They kind of gestured... The, the fake body? There was no time. I was constantly by uh, the Wild Hunt's leader's side. Uh, I had to keep the ruse going to make sure that nobody stumbled upon the truth. Or at least that they didn't stumble upon the truth. Well, it definitely made uh, the last, was it 10 days? Very, very fun. Uh, and Ferris has kind of a, you can't tell if she's, like, mad or upset or still trying to figure out, like, how she feels about this whole situation. Bilar nods and looks over to, um, looks over to Anna and she looks back at him and he just shakes his head. My, my apologies. I, I knew that there was someone eyeing the the money who had access to it i didn't know how they gotten it i i couldn't follow them it would have been too obvious so i set up this entire elaborate everything but the the the, the arrow that you said that you mentioned through the heart 
Um, that that wasn't part of the plan. Uh, it, we, we were supposed to have a, and he kind of like motions like as if that he had like a uh, a knife, and then kind of like draws it across like his belly. And it was it was like it was supposed to be very gory. It's supposed to be very like everything's all over the place, but it seems that things went a little weird. Anyways. Weird is putting it lightly. We'll we'll dock and look shy in a couple days. Get supplies for the trip up the river to Great Forks and then head back to the family's estates. From there, we can plan, rally our forces, and go take back what's ours. I, I'm glad that it's out in the open who is to blame for this, but at the same time, it is, it's hard to believe that this was the plan, that this was their plan all along. It's frankly, I'm not used to being outplayed like this. Outplayed only counts when they're not cheating. I'm very curious how none of us were able to put two and two together. Yeah, no offense, uh, boss man. Can we move it along? What else? Ricky seems very, like, distant and, like, not all there during this conversation. Uncomfortable. He nods and thinks for a moment, uh, genuinely lost in thought. It is clear from the sudden looks on his face um, that he's trying to keep the the feelings of his subordinates in uh, in mind when that he talks. So that he's not like, I don't know, basically like picking out a wound that's super fresh. I got an idea. Changing the subject, uh, seeing how Ricky is feeling, Ferris is going to look to um, Divine. What should we expect, considering where we're going? Oh, man. That's... Well, the the question is, is uh, are y'all coming with me to the... Uh... How do you pronounce the word, Brendan? G e n t e s. Uh, Gens, I believe, or gent, uh, gents. Are y'all gonna accompany me to the uh, to the family's gents, or uh, stay in town? I mean, I don't see why we wouldn't come with you. Yeah, sure. Why not? Maybe I can see someone else's relationship crash and fucking burn. Yo, you'll already get to see that, uh, you know, with the woman I love on the boat to the city where I'm about to get married to somebody else. Yeah. Let's be real, real here. Uh, go there, do the business, and then take it for what it is. Uh, a political arrangement that doesn't have any real effect on your feelings. Or hers, probably. What's the, what's the, what's the phrase you use? Uh, it's just business. They're not entirely wrong. It is essentially just business. It's unfortunate when you care about someone that you have to go through this business. But it's not like you can't be with Aaliyah. I mean, she 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 knows what this is, right? The I, I don't know who you... I don't even think you know the name of the girl you're going to go marry. But she has to understand, just as I'm sure you... Like, it, it can't be a su- surprise that meeting someone for the first time means that you, like, own them and they own you. It's just a business arrangement, and you can go about your fucking business. Right? Is that, is, I'm, I'm missing the missing the mark here. I don't know how the fuck you, you hoity toity fucks and look shy do it, but it sounds like what everyone else does, so. Well, that, uh, that all depends on my new wife, I'm pretty sure, but either way, uh, it might get ugly at 
the gents. Bolar speaks up. Are you planning on causing a ruckus with them? Yeah, because it's really easy to say it's just business and go on about your business. But, you know, I don't want to be married to anyone that isn't Aaliyah. So I'll be informing my family. Thanks for helping me make the decision, guys. Bolar just kind of looks at you and just goes, uh, no, I understand. I I did my best to avoid a situation like you're in, and it has come to bite my family in the ass. Yeah, that's a good part of it, being a fucking nobody. Nobody expects anything of you. Until they do. And then it's a little bit difficult. Anyways. So are you going to go tell your family to fuck off? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, that's what we're doing. Got to go yeah. tell my grandma to go fuck herself. He kind of like extends a fist bump. Yeah, we'll get it done. Uh, the the fist bump that is returned is the weakest fist bump you've ever seen. Yeah. You know. We'll get it done. That all said, uh, Bilar turns to look to Tarali. Can we continue to rely on you and the tyrants to help keep our fighting forces where they are, or are you going to go your own way? You could count on the tyrants. Understood. Once we're back in uh, Great Forks, I'll make sure to uh, do what I can to help outfit you from my own personal, or outfit you and the tyrants from our own personal uh, stocks. I'll be able to get information from some of our runners in uh, throughout the uh, throughout the lands and some of our scouts. Uh, we have a small but useful information network. Um, so we should be able to keep abreast of what's going on in Shiroskiro. If you all need anything, I am happy to help and assist. When you, uh, when you find the sick, I, uh, I had a question, something I wanted to talk to you about. In, in private. Of course. He he looks to everyone else. Um, does anyone else have any questions, concerns, ideas? No. Nope. Just gotta find a place to open up shop in a new city. I'm sure that it won't be necessary for too long. I'm sure that we'll be able to get you back home soon. Get you and Aaliyah back home soon. And he kind of sighs and looks around, and if no one else has anything, he's going to kind of put his head down and, uh, uh, like, sigh, and then stand up and motion to Ricky to basically, like, come have a chat with him. Yeah. Before uh, they leave the room and, like, go off to their own private things, uh, Ferris will get up, go over, and hug him tightly before leaving. He returns the hug to you and then goes, we'll, we'll, we'll chat later. She just nods and finds her way to um, Elyon and kind of hangs out with them. Okay. Um, so, Ricky, what did you want to chat about with Resh Balar? So I assume we go into like a private area? As private as you can get. Just to say yes. Okay. He kind of just sits down and tries to find how to talk about. So, um, taking my own personal problems aside, um, I had another important issue I wanted to talk to you about. Okay. Before your little, uh, your little, um, escapade, let's call it. How was, uh, how was how was the older uh, Falar act the older Resh acting? Fine, um, a little upset, 
but you know, I th- I assumed that it was just pre-wedding or pre-proposal jitters. Yeah, so I heard. Check on Sun, huh? Uh yeah. Uh she I I I pitched the idea as being able to get us a little bit more leverage down in the south and she agreed to it. I mean it's he's immortal, you know, he's gonna what, fifty years? What's that to us? Yeah. Know much about fate, Bala? He thinks about it for a moment and then he nods to you. I know I know a, a fair share of stories. Well, your sister's is kind of fucked. So I hear. I've been given the job to, you know, unfuck it, so to speak. Uh, I'm just trying to find a little, bit, a little bit more information before I just uh, get to work, so to speak. Yeah, of course. Um, oof. Sucked, huh? I thought that it was you for a second. You know, the whole uh, bad blood thing, the whole brother's dead, owed some shit to a demon type situation, but you've cleared mm-hmm. that up. You've cleared that up. So I'm kind of back to the drawing board on this one. I uh, I, I don't know how much you know about me or what I do. Uh, and I'm not going to give out names, but let's just say there's a little bit of a little bit of information from a god about uh, a bad a bad fate that I need to correct before the year's out. Before the year's out? Well, lucky us, we're still in the beginning of the year. And it'll be gone before we know it. Yeah, yeah, if, well... If, if 50 years is a blink of an eye to us, what the fuck is one year, huh? I mean, it could be a very exciting year. He He tries to smile but like it's very clear that like this news of uh not only his sister but his twin having a dark fate is hitting him i think i had like a calm year if it was up to me boss i've had enough fucking excitement okay she uh hey. she jazzed about this arrangement with the tricons uh run not particularly. Well, he sure does seem jazzed about it from his point of view. I mean, it's a it's an arranged marriage, like uh, like your buddy Divine there has. We figured that it would be like one of the uh, like how they do on the realm. You know, you go in, you pop out a you pop out a dragon blooded every now and again, and then you go go hang out with your mistress or your. Uh, or the pool boy, or what have you. You know, that's how Mom always did it. You're talking to the realm reject here, bud. Fair enough. The only reason people give a fuck about me is because I got these needle dragon powers. Anyways, I'm just trying to sculpt the kind of kind of case the joint a little bit, so to speak. Scope out the information before I like. There's not really a way that I know how to solve this other than like. I don't want to say forcing my way into her life, but, like, being a little intrusive. And I'm trying to minimize that, you know? No, I understand. It's... It's one of those things where that you don't want to accidentally force it to happen because you got involved, but at the same time, how... How much is too much? How much is too little? I, I worry about... The main reason I'm real worried is, is, I don't know if you know about my whole situation, and I jangle the manacle on my wrist. I've, I've heard. Yeah, that's what I heard about this from. Oh, well. Yeah, and when you hear about a dark fate from a god of uh, emancipating the enslaved, you get a little worried about someone who has a marriage lined up that's arranged, you know? Sometimes it's something different, but two plus two normally equals four. This is a weird situation. I completely agree. On top of that, it's... On top of that, it's very weird that... I'll be quite honest that she's... Well, well that she exalted at all. Uh, normally, 
uh, and Bilar just kind of looks at you and just kind of goes, well, I mean, we, we're, we're twins, right? Um, I don't know how much that you know about the potential mysticism behind who gets the dragon's blessing and who doesn't. The, the genealogy of this whole shit is a little lost to me. Again, uh, I don't have a fucking family, so I don't know. I got adopted. No, that that's fair, but um, what I'm getting at is, generally speaking, she is maybe one of a handful of cases in the last couple of centuries where that both twins have exalted. It's incredibly rare. Yeah. Uh, to the point that um, some scholars on the realm believe that... Uh, if that you have twins, it's either considered unlucky or one of them basically steals the exaltation of the other. Like, you know, while that they're, you in know, the, in, in the, in the, in the oven. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, when I heard you, you got, got the first time I, and then heard about the, the dark fate. I was, a little bit concerned that maybe there was a little bit of king making happening in the background, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Me and my sister don't get along on the best of days, but we agreed to keep the family running the way that between you and me, uh, from one fire aspect to a to a what aspect, you don't fucking get along with any of you fucks. We're all polar opposites. The both of you would see would see the forest burn for the trees just to see just to see a good uh just to see a good view at night, but there's there's something raw and beautiful in that passion that you both have. Sometimes. Not loving it too much lately, but we'll see what happens. Sometimes people think you, your excitement just means you don't care about them. Thank you for taking the time to enjoy our show. If you liked what you heard, why not leave a review or tell a friend about us? It helps get the good word out about the work we put into this show. If you wanted to ask us any questions, you can contact us through Twitter at a pair of dice lost or email at a pair of dice lost at gmail.com. The theme song for this game is Dragon Dance by Raphael Crux, used under a Creative Commons license. And for making it this far, I saw that cool thing you did, so have some stunt dice.